thank you very much uh, for everyone joining me this afternoon um, just for an in-depth look and a, and a run through the itinerary for our small group Costa Rica's Wildlife Wonders group tour um, which is a tour completely designed to uh, see as many of the mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and also explore three of the key ecosystems that can be found in Costa Rica. Um, I should say my name's Chris Smith. I'm one of three Chrises at Wildlife Worldwide and the Travelling Naturalist, which some of you may know already. Um, I work in the product helping put um, these trips together and which you which you see and um, helping make those run smoothly and putting all the travel plans together but anyway that's enough about me and we'll get on with the presentations if you do have any questions at all please add them to um, the q a section which hopefully if you scroll around a little bit you'll be able to see um, and put any questions that you think of in there and i will answer some of them as i'm going along but mostly i'll answer them at the end when there's a a bit of time for me to go through some of the questions as well so moving on um before i jump into the itinerary itself um it's always useful to get an overview of the of of the country to get a better understanding of the destination um and start with simply the capital of costa rica is san jose almost perfectly positioned in the in the middle of the country the reason i point this out is that is because um, it has the main international airport for Costa Rica and inevitably any trip to this country starts and finishes in San Jose and Costa Rica's wildlife wonders is just like that. It, you spend the first night in San Jose and the last night in San Jose in a, a nice hotel called Hotel Bougainvillea um, and it's just 15, 20 minutes away from the airport. Um, Costa Rica is known for its biodiversity. Um, in fact, Costa Rica is considered to be the most biodiverse country on the planet. Um, the country just takes up 0.3% of the Earth's land surface, but the country is actually home to an incredible 4% of all known species to exist on planet Earth, which is a quite incredible number for such a, for such a small country. And the reason for this is primarily due to its location on the planet. Uh, it's in the middle of the Central American Isthmus, which is the thin strip of land which connects North and South America. On its eastern coastline, we have the Caribbean Sea. And then on the western coastline, we have the Pacific Ocean, which you can see on the map on screen at the moment. And additionally, we have in the southern half of Costa Rica, the Talamanca Mountains, which rise to well above 3000 metres. And what all of these physical features create is a huge diversity of ecosystems, which in turn supports an enormous number of different species. So during Costa Rica's wildlife wonders, the itinerary explores three of the key wildlife locations within the country. To start with, we head up to northeastern Costa Rica and to the Tortuguero National Park, which is a variety which is made up of mangroves, swamps rivers and importantly is right on the coast with the Caribbean Sea. Following that, we then return to San Jose and drive into the Talamanca Mountains and in particular to a small village called San Gerardo de Dota, and which is within the Sevegre Valley, which is just about here near, near Juntas. I apologize for any pronunciations of these um, of these country, of these um, towns and cities. And then lastly, we head down right to the southwestern corner of Costa Rica, which is the Osa Peninsula, where the very famous Corcovado National Park is based. So getting into the itinerary, as I mentioned, we spend our first night in San Jose in the very pleasant hotel, which is perfect place to stay after a long day of um, traveling from the UK. It's a day flight over. Um, so a, a night in San Jose is, is much appreciated, um, especially you, you don't necessarily want to be having a long transfer immediately after a eight or nine hour, eight or nine hour trip um, flight over. So, but the following morning we travel to Tortuguero National Park in northeast Costa Rica, which, as I mentioned, is this area of mangroves, tropical rainforests, lagoons beaches and it also has this intricate network of canals which bisect through the very dense vegetation and importantly again as you can see on screen is right on the coast with the Caribbean Sea. 
Tautic area is only reached by boat or light aircraft. And during this itinerary, we experience both ways of getting to the park. Um, on arrival, we'll take a boat which travels through the canals and brings us to an, our accommodation. And then on the last day in Tortuguero, we get a flight, light aircraft flight back to San Jose. And in total, we'll be spending three nights here in Tortuguero. Um, this picture here is a very typical scene in Tortuguero and gives an idea of how dense the vegetation can be. Um, and really the best way to get around the national park and to see its wildlife is to explore it by boat and navigate the various channels which crisscross through the park. Um, the park is home to a huge number of species, including almost 400 birds, various different mammal species, including three out of four of Costa Rica's monkey species, which here would be the spider monkey, mantled howler monkey and the white faced capuchin. And there's also various different reptiles to be seen as well. One such reptile you may see whilst out on the water is painted turtles, which are on screen at the moment. Uh, and these are actually just one of seven river turtles that you can see in Tortuguero. Obviously, Tortuguero is very famous for having sea turtles as well, and I'll get on to that in just a second. But this is just one of seven. So kind of highlights just how much diversity there is just with the reptiles and amphibians. Um, within Tortuguero. Another common sighting in Tortuguero are green iguanas. Um, based on experience, these guys can be seen absolutely anywhere from the highest point on the tree all the way down to ground level. Um, when I was there just before lockdown, um, well, the first when the pandemic really started and started getting going, um, I was walking around the lodge, which we stay at on this group tour, and there was a green iguana that must have been, if you included the tail, almost two metres long, just um, strolling around the place. So, you know, you can encounter wildlife at any time here in Tortuguero. Uh, some of the other reptiles you might see are salamanders, poison dart frogs, and also basilisk lizards, which are also known as Jesus Christ lizards because of their ability to uh, run on water when they need to. Um, which is fairly impressive to see at the best of times. Uh, like I mentioned, lots of mammals to see. Uh, this in particular is a spider monkey uh, and very, very possible that whilst you're on the boat that these, these guys will be jumping around you, above you, everywhere. So always keep an eye out for these ones. Also the howler monkeys, but howler monkeys, you'll probably hear them before you see them. Um, other mammals that you may spot, three-toed sloth, um, quintessential Costa Rican species, uh, peccaries, and when night starts to fall, uh, all the bats as well. Various bird species to be seen. This is a collared aracari, which we'll see in Tortuguero, but also in other parts of Costa Rica. And Tortuguero is also an excellent place for toucans. This is a chestnut mandible toucan, um, highlighting the chestnut colour on the lower half of its beak. Um, it's also possible to see keel-billed toucans as well in Tortuguero, along with white-collared mannequins, great green macaws and green kingfishes as well. But I mean, there's almost 400, so um, I won't take up the whole presentation <laughs> going through all of them. Um, but the thing with Tortuguero and much of Costa Rica really is, yes, the number of sightings that you get, but it's the variety of different species that you get. Um, when you're out in the field, like you never see, you're seeing so many different things within an hour or two when you're out and about. During our time in Tortuguero, we stay uh, at Laguna Lodge. And the big advantage of staying here is that the lodge has direct access to the beach where you can, again, see plenty of wildlife. Um, when I was staying here within 30 seconds of being on the beach from the, from the hotel, uh, from the lodge, I mean, um, we're seeing three toad sloth. So literally you can see wildlife at any time and anywhere. Tortuguero is also very famous for its nesting sea turtles. It's primarily green and hawks, green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles that come ashore at Tortuguero, but there's also loggerhead and leatherback turtles as well. The height of the nesting season for turtles is usually July to September, which is the middle of the rainy season in Costa Rica. But due to the numbers that come here, the number of 
sheer individuals that come to this beach and also the different species that come, it is possible to see um, turtles all year round, um, but it's just not as reliable as going between July and September. So these are just uh, a few images to show you what the accommodation is like uh, in Torskera at Laguna Lodge. Um, as I mentioned, the main advantage is that we have direct access to the beach when we stay here. All the rooms are en suite, usually feature two double beds, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. And there's a ceiling fan. Um, you know, all the windows open up, have meshing to stop insects coming in. Um, and you're completely surrounded by the, by the grounds of the lodge as well. As you can see, there's also a swimming pool. There's actually two swimming pools, which are perfect uh, for downtime does because it, it does get warm up in Tortuguero up to like 32 degrees or so, and it does get humid. So it's nice to cool off during the middle of the day. Also a bar and an open air restaurant, which serves buffet style meals. So from Tortuguero, we fly, as I mentioned, fly by light aircraft back to San Jose, where we then immediately transfer to the small village of San Gerardo de Dota in the Sevegre Valley. And this journey from San Jose to, to where we're, our next destination is about two hours by road, and we'll stay here for two nights. Now, San Gerardo de Dota and, and its location within, within the mountains offers a complete contrast to what we would have experienced in tropical Tortuguero, as we because we're traveling up into the cloud forests of Costa Rica. Uh, immediately on arrival, you'll be able to feel how much fresher it is, how much cooler it is, and it's quite a refreshing interlude in comparison to some of the other places that we go to during the itinerary of Costa Rica's wildlife wonders. Um, for these two nights, we'll be right up, as I mentioned, in the Talamanca Mountains. For instance, our lodge is located at around 2,300 metres above sea level. So it is quite a rise in altitude um, and, again, complete contrast to Tortuguero. And the altitude really does affect the temperatures in comparison to other locations. So well worth taking some layers with you. Uh, the mornings are usually better in this part of the world and then the cloud kind of builds up and rolls in and comes in during the afternoon which can sometimes lead to rain at all times of years they say there's a dry and a wet season but it rains pretty much all year round so there's a variety of mainly birds to see in this part of costa rica um but amazing several regional endemics and things like that but the real target species that we're looking for when we're in San Gerardo de Dota are, are these guys, the resplendent quetzals, which for many people is one of the most beautiful birds on the planet. And Severe Grey Valley and San Gerardo de Dota in this area of Costa Rica is widely considered to not just be the best place to see these birds in Costa Rica, but also in, in Central America, because these guys can also be seen in Mexico and, and other areas of cloud forest in Par Panama as well, Guatemala too. So in terms of the best time to see these, uh, these brilliant birds, it is usually considered to be their breeding season, which starts in mid-February and runs until early July. And this kind of coincides whilst they are breeding and, and nesting at this time, coincides with when the wild avocado trees in this region begin to fruit. And this is effectively their favorite food. Um, having said this, it's definitely possible to see birds all year round, uh, to see these birds all year round. Um, there's a misconception that they're only really seen um, during, the, during their nesting season, but they, they are seen all year round. And the other one is that the males sometimes lose their the, the streamer feathers that they have but again these are permanent feathers um, they grow them back if they fall off um, and they, they keep them all year round so if you are looking to see these birds then i would recommend traveling in breeding season because it would macro, ma maximize your chances but at the same time these birds can be seen at any time of year in this part of the world The, there's also more birds to enjoy in this area, including several regional endemics, as I mentioned, one of which is on screen at the moment. This is a long-tailed silky flycatcher. And these birds, which you can kind of see in the image, are closely related to waxwings as well. 
Uh, they're only found in the mountains of Costa Rica and Western Panama, above an altitude of 1,850 metres. Um, I say regional endemic because, as, as I've just mentioned, their, their distribution crosses the borders of, of Costa Rica and Panama, but this area is, is, is tiny um, and much smaller than it would be if it's an endemic of one of those countries. So it's a very specialised bird to this particular environment. It can be found in Costa Rica and Western Panama. San Gerardo de Dota and Svegre Valley is also a haven for a wonderful array of hummingbirds. And during our stay, we'll visit a cafe towards the top of the valley, which has a wonderful garden, which is frequented or filled with hummingbirds, it seemed at times, as well as um, the grounds of our lodge as well. This particular hummingbird you can see on screen is known as the lesser violeteer, which is commonly sighted in the area. But there are also some rarer species to see here, which are on some, which you know, our people want to see, including in particular the fiery throated hummingbird. Another very colourful bird that you can see whilst up and up in this part of the of the country is the flame coloured tanager, and a favourite of mine when I was over in Costa Rica, the emerald toucanet. It's a much smaller subspecies of the toucan. So for our two night stay in San Gerardo de Dota, we'll be staying at the wonderful Trogon Lodge, um, selection of images on screen. The lodge is situated on the banks of the Sevegre River as it tumbles down the valley. And it has beautiful gardens where you can see any number of different hummingbirds. Uh, and it's possible to see in the grounds of, the, of this lodge, the resplendent quetzal as well. So it's always worth whenever you're walking around, just keeping an eye out as well. Uh, the rooms are located in cabanas and which are positioned throughout the gardens and predominantly made from wood. They feature ensuite bathrooms and also have heating for the cooler nights as well up in the mountains. And it's probably one of about five properties in Costa Rica which has heating. Um, but it is needed up in this part of the world uh, at some points during the year. Uh, and from experience, the food at the restaurant is very good. Like I mentioned, with regards to the climate here, uh, in San Gerardo de Dota, it is well worth taking a fleece or two. It does get cooler. So I mentioned in Tortuguera, it could get up to 32 degrees or so. In San Gerardo de Dota, it's going to be a maximum of 15 to 18 degrees during the day. So it's a very, it's quite a big contrast. And certainly that's accentuated by the differences in humidity between the two destinations as well. Also take a raincoat because it does, it will probably rain when you go there. Then our last key destination on the itinerary for Costa Rica's wildlife wonders is the Osset Peninsula and in particular the Corcovado National Park. Now for the journey between San Gerardo taking us down to the Osset Peninsula it will take most of the day. It's about a five hour journey by road but we'll break this up on the way with lunch and a couple of short birding walks just to stretch people's legs and try and take in some more of the wildlife that we see. We will arrive at our next lodge on the Osset Peninsula during the late afternoon, so plenty of time to freshen up and get ready for dinner. And then we'll also head out on a night walk from our lodge in their private reserve to see some of Costa Rica's nocturnal wildlife, which could include red-eyed green tree frog, very iconic species that a lot of people want to see when they go to Costa Rica, but also species like black and white owl and various different insects and snakes too. So the Osa Peninsula, and in particular the Corcovado National Park, is arguably the premier wildlife destination in Costa Rica, and is the most biodiverse place in the country. Whilst, I, as I mentioned towards the start, Costa Rica is home to 4% of all known species that exist on the planet. Amazingly though, on its own, Corcovado National Park is home to 2% of all known species that are found on planet Earth. And this is just in an area of 424 square kilometers, which to think there's that many different species in, smotch, in such a small area is, is almost unbelievable. On the Osso Peninsula, we'll find primary tropical rainforest meeting the waters of the Pacific Ocean. And large swathes of this incredible place have been largely left untouched for hundreds of years. In fact, it's thought Corcovado National Park is the largest sway the protected tropical rainforest left on the Pacific coast of Central America. 
There's so much to see both on the land and in the water here on the Osa Peninsula and in Corcovado National Park. And we'll try and take in as much of it as we can during our three nights here on the peninsula. So the Osa Peninsula and Corcovado National Park will likely be the most rewarding location when it comes to mammals. So I'm not saying we won't see any during our during the rest of the itinerary, we will certainly see plenty of monkeys and sloths. Um, but in terms of variety of mammals, then we're certainly going to get that here in, on the Ossa Peninsula in Corcovado National Park. For instance, this guy is a white nosed coati. And we'll also see squirrel monkeys, which is the remaining Costa Rican monkey species that we won't hopefully have seen in Tortuguero. And this will hopefully you know, mean that we've seen all four species. Uh, the Corcovado National Park will also provide our best opportunity to spot a particularly elusive mammal, Braid's tapir. These amazing creatures are considered to be very difficult to see across pretty much everywhere else in Central and South America. But on the Ossa Peninsula and in, and in Corcovado, there is a genuinely realistic chance of encountering tapir. Um, and I can say this from experience. Um, I only had one in one excursion into the national park on foot and I came within 10 meters of a tapir. So yeah, it is certainly possible. And, you know, some people are speaking to as guests had seen tapir on three or four occasions during a, a longer stay uh, on the Ossa Peninsula as well. I think Corcovado and the Ossa Peninsula is also one of the few places where you can see tapir on the beach as well so literally so much life everywhere um, in this part of Costa Rica there's also a great deal of mammalian life to be found in the seas as well around the Osa Peninsula and included in the itinerary of of Costa Rica's wildlife wonders is a boat trip to try and see some of the cetacean species that frequent the waters around around this peninsula uh, most likely we'll see dolphin species such as spinner, common and bottlenose dolphins. And there's also whales to be seen as well during certain times of year. Humpbacks are the most common, but there's also a possibility of sigh, pilot and bride's whale as well. The humpback whales, it, Costa Rica receive, well, sees humpback whales from the Northern hemisphere and from the Southern hemisphere at different times of year. So the humpbacks from the Northern hemisphere arrive in, late November and stay until April time. And then from the Southern Hemisphere, the humpbacks arrive in late June and stay until around November. So it's one of the reasons why humpback whales are more commonly seen um, as they come from the opposite ends of, of, the, of the globe to, to these warmer waters. The bird life is equally prolific in on the Ossa Peninsula. Again, we may encounter red and green and scarlet macaws elsewhere in this itinerary, but our chances are certainly the best on the Ossa Peninsula where they can be observed regularly. Uh, and these birds are certainly a delight to witness. Um, you may have to work a little bit harder to see scarlet macaws, but any other species of macaw, they seem to be almost everywhere um, in, on the Ossa Peninsula. So it's certainly the place to see them. Uh, another bird that can be observed from experience is this striking black-throated trogon, which I have to say is probably one of the most boring names they could come up with for this bird, uh, seeing as it's so bright and colourful. Um, but yeah. uh, this bird is closely related to resplendent quetzal as well, um, which is a subspecies of the trogons too. So during our time you know, on the Ossa Peninsula, We'll be staying here at the Danta Corcovado Lodge. Um, if anyone is interested, Danta means uh, tapir in Spanish, which helps explain um, the reason for the name and gives an indication of just how reliable, in a sense, that tapir can be seen in this part of Costa Rica. Uh, the lodge is situated on its own private 30 acre reserve, a short distance from the Corcovado National Park. The lodge itself has just seven rooms and they are all constructed from sustainable materials uh, in my opinion you know costa rica is taking sustainability extremely seriously and out of all the countries that i visited uh, costa rica is certainly doing this the best so far and has embraced it the most 
Uh, the rooms are very comfortable, simple, but perfectly comfortable, have everything that you need. Uh, they're all ensuite, just like the rest of the accommodation throughout this uh, itinerary. Um, though the bathrooms are open air. There's also a bar and a restaurant, of course. Lastly, just to show you a, a different frog, because everyone knows um, about the red eye green tree frogs that you get in Costa Rica, but there's there's loads more to see um, over there. Uh, this is a splendid leaf frog, um, and it's just one of several other amazing frog species that you can see in Costa Rica. It's things like the glass frog, which in the right light can appear completely translucent and, and species like that. So after our stay on the Osa Peninsula, we transfer back to the town of Puerto Jimenez to catch uh, a light aircraft flight back to, back to the capital city, which takes around 40 minutes. Um, and if the weather's good, you either have good views of the Pacific Ocean or the Talamanca Mountains, depending on which side of the plane you're sitting. Um, we then spend another night at the hotel uh, Borgen Villa, which we would have stayed at on the first night before then flying back, back to the UK uh, the next day. And that is an overnight flight back to the UK. So that was just a quick run through of the itinerary for this small group tour to Costa Rica to enjoy all its wildlife and, and habitats. And just before I go on and see if there's any questions, um, just a quick bit about Costa Rica in that it's often thought of as being an introduction introductory destination to Central and South America, but that by no means doesn't mean that it's not got just as much wildlife to see and hasn't got you know, spectacular environments to go and look at either. Um, there's just as much wildlife to see here as there is anywhere else in the region, but the thing that gives Costa Rica an advantage, and I suppose why it's got this reputation for being an introduction um, to the region is that it has some excellent accommodation options and it also has brilliant English speaking guides as well, which some of the other countries in this part of the world aren't necessarily um, able to match. So time for any questions. So I'll check if we've got any and um, yeah, just bear with me whilst I find where they are. <laughs> okay. Um, what time of year does it go and is single accommodation possible? Uh, yes, single accommodation is certainly possible and there's a number of different departures throughout the year. So um, we have departures predominantly during the dry season. So that would drier season, I should say, which is um, December through to April. Uh, but we also look at putting departures on during the rainy season as well around august time to try and coincide with the height of the turtle nesting season as well uh, baggage allowances on light aircraft flight is uh, 18 kilos if i remember correctly um i'll need to double check that but i'm certainly sure it's 18 kilos in a soft-sided bag um, and so you're only looking at about 22 kilos less um, in terms of difference between the light aircraft and the international flight. Um, question about Laguna Lodge on the larger side. Is it geared more towards general holiday makers rather than wildlife enthusiasts? Um, having been there, um, no. I would say it, it, it is catered to wildlife enthusiasts because the main things to do there are are very much nature-based and to go out on the, the rivers looking for wildlife, to go looking for the turtles, to enjoy the birds that you see around. Um, and to be honest, all the accommodation options in Tortuguero are a similar size. Um, there are, there's maybe one or two which are a bit of a higher standard, but even then you're looking at about 40 to 50 rooms at those ones as well. So it, they are larger, but at the same time, Tortuguero can cater to a large number of people, and there's a lot of there's a lot there's several channels which you go out and explore and look on the boats. Um, and having been myself, um, I didn't find it overly busy. I didn't find it busy. Um, you do see other boats when you're out there, um, and not overly noisy either. So because everyone is there for, for a similar reason, which is to enjoy the location and its wildlife. 
Um, how are the Jaguar and Puma populations doing in Costa Rica? Is there any possibility you might see them? Um, there is a chance of seeing Jaguar. Puma, I, I would say you, if you saw a Puma in Costa Rica, you might want to get a lottery ticket when you came home because that, that would be extremely lucky. Jaguars are more of a possibility, though still very rare. Um, we have had photographic groups in the past see Jaguars whilst in Tortuguero, um, and there have been sightings of Jaguars in Corcovado National Park. And Corcovado is probably your best bet if you are looking for Jaguars, but I must admit that there are other destinations which would be, if Jaguars what you would want to see, then Brazil is probably your better bet for, for that one. But Costa Rica is, in terms of sheer variety of species and just in terms of better accommodation options and, and guiding, then Costa Rica is, is a very good option. Uh, are there electric sockets in all the rooms? Yes, there are. Everywhere has um, electric sockets and most more often not all from sustainable sources as well. So all these lodges that I featured have solar panels, which they use for the majority of their electric um, and often use that 100% of the time. Um, were all the photos taken using zoom lenses? Uh, a lot of them were, but some of them were not. Um, having, I've used, when I went to Costa Rica, I used a hybrid camera. Um, and when I saw the tape here, I barely had to put zoom on to take pictures of it. Um, the reason they're not in this presentation is that <laughs> I haven't had time to download them and, and get them in the right format. But yeah, I didn't have to zoom very far on on my camera in order to, to get a full frame picture of a tapir. Um, and again, that's the same for a number of the bird species as well. Uh, and coatis, sloth. Um, monkeys are tricky at the best of times because they move around so much. So the, there is a little bit of zoom required there. But you're certainly getting sightings, which you're not having to put your camera on to maximum zoom either. Uh, and the last question is manatees, are they seen there? Um, there is a population of West Indian manatees, I believe, up in Tortuguero. Um, very rarely seen, though. Um, but, you know, they've seen a few times a year by people when they're out and about. So... Yeah, it's, they are there, but again, if you see them, you would be extremely lucky. Uh, and lastly, one more question. Do you use local experts as guides? Uh, yes, we do. So there will be a guide that accompanies you from San Jose all the way from Tortuguero through to the Talamanca Mountains, down to the Osa Peninsula and back again. So there'll be one naturalist guide that is with you throughout the journey um, and having met some of the guys that we use for these group tours really know their stuff um, speak english really well so no issues with things being lost in translation and stuff with like stuff like that um, but when we're in certain in other parts of of the country we'll sometimes use local experts in those regions as well um, just to help with sightings and and seeing things too um, having a bit of local knowledge about you know what's recently been shown where's where's the tapia been recently and so on and so forth so yeah but they'll be with you to assist and help transfer all the way through which helps on on that front too so uh, that was all the questions. Ooh, have I missed some here? No, great, brilliant. So, sorry, <laughs> just making sure I haven't missed anyone's questions, but um, if you do, do just get in touch with us um, and let us know if you do have any other questions. Um, as you can see on screen, there is a there is a special offer. Um, if you use that code on the screen, you would get a hundred pounds off per person if you book one of our um, Costa Rica's Wildlife Wonders departures by the sixth of August. Um, you can get in touch with us with the following, with the details that are on the screen, um, and we can send you a travel plan um, of the itinerary for Costa Rica's Wildlife Wonders if you are interested. And lastly, there's a couple of events 
there's a talk from Alex Hyde, excellent photographer, particularly with macro, um, talking about Austria tomorrow evening. And then uh, on Monday evening, it's myself again talking about Alaska. So if you want to join those, just let us know. But uh, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and all the sunshine. And yeah, great to talk to you all.